recording now and share screen. Okay, can everybody see that? See the screen, can't see you. <laughs> oh, you don't need to see me. <laughs> can you slide it a little slide bit a left? Little bit left. Slide a little bit left. I it's blocked by it's pictures blocked of the viewers. Of the move the bloody viewers. <laughs> it's dead easy to move them. <laughs> dead easy to move them. How do I, how do I move the viewers? I, that shouldn't be my problem. It Minimize it to the smallest thing and then move it up to the top of the screen. And then move it up to the top of the screen. Hey. How's that? Feedback. Please, please, everyone, remember to mute your microphones. To mute your microphones. Yeah. Okay, better start muting. Right, well, um, welcome to the autumn term. Uh, first talk. Um, um, Somebody's microphone is open and it's feeding back. Okay, so can everybody turn off the, can everybody mute themselves, so to speak? Right. <clears throat> now. Okay, so that's my address. And here's the abstract. Uh, I'm going to talk about generalized knots, braids, and how doodles, which are a type of generalized knot, how can they be used to generate commutator identities? So this is joint work with Andy and Naoko and Saichi. Right. Let's go to the next page. So what do we mean by generalized knot theory? So uh, we, we, it's a groupoid, that's one way of looking at it. And the knots themselves are path components of the groupoid. So what are the objects of this groupoid? These are diagrams, okay, which are usually denoted by KLM, et cetera, and consist of the following. An immersion in general position of a finite number of circles onto, well, to an oriented surface sigma. If the surface is a sphere, it is called a planar diagram. The image of one circle is called a component of the diagram. Okay, so far, um, so, uh, okay, so, I was just uh, just uh, letting people come in. Okay, nothing, nothing terribly original now. Anyway, uh, because it's uh, everything um, is in general position, we've got double points, and these are labeled or tagged by type, indicated by. Can somebody turn off their um? The microphone, please, because we're getting an echo. Um, so we've got Roman letters A, B, which tell you what type of double point it is, and sometimes by a geometric glyph. These tags have a positive version, A, say, and a negative version, A bar. And A may be equal to A bar in certain circumstances. So um, let me see if I can do a drawing now. Um, this is technology. Aha, uh -huh. so here's a crossing. And we give it a tag, A, say. A is going to stand for some, some uh, it gives it meaning in life, right? So two diagrams, KL are considered the same. 
If there's a homeomorphism of sigma which takes one immersion to the other and preserves orientation and tags, in that case, we write K is isomorphic to L. So far, so those are the objects of this groupoid. The morphisms are the four R moves. First three of which are analogous uh, to the well-known Reidemeister moves. So let's, uh, well, we all know what the Reidemeister moves look like. We'll just go over them. So here's the usual Reidemeister moves. This is um, R1, tagged with A, and we can get rid of it if there's a loop, or we can introduce it. And if we've got two A and an A bar next to one another, we can get rid of it. Now, this is the, the R3, and I've written down three tags here. In general, there'll only be two tags in, in practice, but, um, but we'll see as we go on. Uh, now, if I take, uh, and I'm going to assume that all of these uh, arcs are ordered, and I can always assume that they're ordered from left to right. Uh, there's a trick you can do to make, oops, that's not what I'm supposed to have. What happened there? Um, I don't know why that happened. Okay, so here the, here we are, and we've got a, um, we can always assume, as I say, that the orientations of these arcs go from left to right, like so. And if we do that, I mean, the other kind of orientation would be if, if this triangle here is oriented all the way around in a coherent fashion, but we, we don't need to consider that. And of course, then C occupies a certain middle. Um, it, it stays in the middle, whatever happens. Uh, and B moves down to here, and A moves down to there. So, um, so when, when we get to that situation, we usually, in recognition that C is different, we just put a, a, a semicolon there. Okay, so let's see how we get on now. But there's a fourth one. And the fourth one uh, is sometimes occurs. Um, we've got a, as though we're doing an R2, but we've got an A and a B, and replace it by C and D um, <coughs> in certain circumstances. And the point is that we're allowed to work on our diagrams, these are the morphisms. Um, these are generated by these moves. Okay, and so we've got, and they're all reversible, so that's why it's a groupoid. Okay. Rob, Rog, can I butt in there for a moment? Of course. Um, the the A B C the, the triple move. Yeah. Don't you sometimes need, need to allow the labels to change so that B becomes A down C or something like that? Um, yeah. No, I think I think what happens is 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 this is the general this you know I mean you'll presumably think of a, a real crossing or something. Yeah, I'm thinking of something. <laughs> yeah, well, you see that if that was if that line was over those two, this line here, then you'd have. Uh, a that would be a left hand crossing so you'd have a r bar and here you'd have an r and then when it goes this way that b now you see is now a positive crossing and that's a negative crossing so never mind carry on sorry does that answer your question not really i'll look later okay so um we want, um, so which of these moves are allowed and which are not will define the theory. Okay, so the table below indicates some examples with only one tag. So here's some examples, right. So 
diagrams themselves form a theory, a very boring theory, because uh, none of the moves are allowed to be done. And um, so the diagram essentially stays the same. So that's a kind of like a, a, a zero of the system. There's flat knots where everything is allowed. There's just one, um, one tag and F bar is equal to F. And so that's a kind of free homotopy uh, on, in a, a surface or something. Then there's the classical ones that are, although I've been thinking that it might be useful to, um, if I can find out where my thing is. I mean, instead of R, we could have put sigma because that would be in keeping with, um, with braids. Um, so, and that, the classical one actually has a, a, a glyph. I'll draw the glyph here. Uh, so, you know, we always draw a classical crossing with a break. Okay, so it's just a geometric indication of which one is above and which is below. And so that's positive. And of course, if we do it the other way around, so that, that might be R. Um, and then if we wanted R bar, it would just be like this. R bar. And then uh, doodles. Well, for doodles, um, R1 and R2 are allowed, but not R3. So, um, and, and that makes life quite interesting, as we'll see. So, well, there's lots of um, other examples, um, like the uh, diagram theory and F are opposites. Uh, o in the sense that nothing is allowed and F is everything's allowed. Um, any, uh, and then we've got a definition. Any theory which allows R2A for all tags is called regular. So that's an important concept to remember. So, um, so a regular theory means you can do uh, R2, you know, the second Reitermeister move. So if we go to, uh, if we look above, um, F, R, and D are regular, but um, diagram theory is not, because you're just not allowed to do anything. So you certainly can't do R2. Now, what about R3? Um, right, okay. A tag X is said to dominate a tag A in a regular theory, written X dominates A like that, if this holds. So I think this is what uh, Colin wanted to say. So if we, um, so, I can't, ah, here we are. So for instance, if I've got an arc like this, and this is a crossing down here, any kind of crossing, whatever. So this, this, this is R, this is uh, say, X, well, we'll call it X bar, and this is X. And so this is allowed to move across this blob here. All right, so that's the, that's what we mean by dominating. Okay, so. Um, and of course, which, um, which, um, which tags uh, on a, an arc allow it to dominate, of course, defines the theory. So if there's an X such that X and X bar dominate all tags, then the theory is called normal. Okay, so that's the next definition to think about. Okay, that's a normal knot theory. All right, so classical knots are normal. 
as both R and R bar dominate. Uh, you see the R dominating means the arc goes over and R bar dominate means that the arc goes under, okay? So, so that's the notion of a normal Right, now we come to the virtual tag V. So this is this has got a picture and it's always denoted with a little circle around. That's its glyph, but it's sometimes more accurate just to put a V there because this glyph is also the same for a weld crossing. Um, but the point the, the virtual tag is it dominates everything. It's the top of the tree. It, um, it uh, dominates everything. Um, and we know that uh, the virtual crossing is, and it can be interpreted as putting the diagram on an oriented surface where this, um, this virtual crossing means we go over a handle so on well you probably know all that okay the well tag w has the same properties as the virtual tag v but in addition it is dominated by the right hand real tag r you see so v is not dominated by r but w is and so this is the first forbidden move okay in other words the the, um, the picture is You've got, you've got this, uh, say, I, well, I've drawn a negative crossing there. So this is allowed to move over anything because that's, so this is now, this is acting as a virtual crossing. And so, um, But for the um, for the weld, then this is uh, then there's um, then there's something different because the the real you can go over a a weld. So this can go over a weld. But you can't do that with a V. Okay, so that's this is this is called the first forbidden move, F1. The second forbidden move is to go under. Uh, but then everything collapses if you do that. Right, so, um, and we have the singular tag S is dominated by all other tags. Now, what does a singular um, crossing look like? It's usually denoted by its glyph is a, is a black blob here. All right, so that's equal to S. And the point is that um, we can move, uh, uh, I won't draw it, but an arc, but to say a real arc can move over that, but the, the singular tag can't, can't move over anything. Um, that's the phone, don't worry about it. But, but the singular tag can't even go over anything I, I, I hear Colin coming up the stairs <laughs> letting in I keep letting him in I keep clipping on it clicking on it to let him in oh I, okay he says he keeps clicking on you to let oh he's gone 
Okay, right. Are you there, Colin? Possibly. Well, I hope so. Okay, so, but, and now the singular tag, S, is interesting because it's an example of um, the R4 move. Um, so, let me give an example. So, if I've got, I've got a, a real crossing here, and then, um, a singular tag. This is the same, uh, this is a sort of twist, so that is the same as if I did a, as if I did this. Okay, you can probably visualize that as a sort of rotation to 180 degrees. So there's this example of R4, right? So, you know, it does have an existence. Uh, and another, well, we're going to meet R4 again when we talk about braids, generalized braids. So um, I'll get to that soon. Right. Planar doodles are regular but not normal because we know they're not normal because they don't have R3. So, uh, but on, on the other hand, virtual doodles or doodles on a surface of higher genus are normal because now we've got the virtual crossing which dominates and so makes it normal. So that's it's an interesting fact that planar doodles are not normal and so they, they require special treatment. Right, what is next? Generalized braids, okay. So we take a, a generalized knot theory and we want to make a, uh, a braid theory out of it. Okay, so supposing these are the elements of the tags for this generalized knot theory. And now a generalized braid alpha can be pictured as a geometric diagram. Well, there's two ways of doing it and they both have their uses. Here's what might be called a normal what you might expect um, a braid to look like. So you've got proper crossings here and they're tagged by A, B and C. And in fact, that you can write that as a word, A2, C1, B3. So it's A2 because it's, uh, it's on the second level, C1, it's on the first level, and B3 because that, that crossing's on the third level. Okay, so. But we can also write it like this, which I call, um, or we call a brick wall diagram. So we were replacing the crossings by this thickened arc here. And that, um, that, that is a useful way of looking. You might, you might think it's unnecessary, but it is useful. Um, when we look at the Alexander theorem. Oh, okay, so that's, I've multiplied two braids here. If they're the same size, got the same number of arrows going through, so we can multiply them in the obvious way. Uh, we can also stack them. Um, and those of you who, um, who might think deeply would say, well, that's rather confusing because, um, what do I do with all the stuff in beta and all the stuff in alpha? Um, it's going to, you know, where do they fit? Well, in fact, the you know, it doesn't matter where they go uh, because we're going to see in a minute there's a, a rule which allows that. There's a generator, the usual one, AI. So it's uh, on the ith level, it's, um, it's tagged by A. And then um, so this is, this is always allowed if A and B are sufficiently far away from each other, then, um, then we can, it, it doesn't matter whether B is in front or A is in front. So that, that means that stacking, which we did earlier is, is well defined. Uh, where is it here? Doesn't matter 
how I put it. So we all, we always have that uh, sort of kind of commuting um, condition. And now, of course, corresponding to the R three move, we've got we've got this relationship here. Uh, so this is uh, this corresponds to an arc labeled A and B moving across C, right? And then C pops up here, and then we get BAs down here, and then we get the R three relation, which um, I can write down as um, so that would be A I because it's on the ith level C I minus one. And then B I and is equal to over here B I minus one C I A I minus one. Okay, so we've got that relationship there. But as I say, nine times well, as far as I know, every example there's only ever two tags, uh, and one of which dominates the other. So um but that's more general tags. <clears throat> and then, of course, the R4 relationship is just replacing A and B by C and D. So that C there, C there. And now, right, well, so far we've had, we've got a monoid because we've, um, we can compose things. We haven't talked about inverses, but, but there is an inverse given by, uh, by this picture here, the obvious picture, A and A bar, and that makes the monoid into a group. Uh, and now we come to a question, which I want you to do for your homework. Is the natural map from the monoid generated by this knot theory to the group of this um, the natural map, is this always injected? I don't know an example where it's not injected. I mean, for instance, um, the monoid of positive braids always injects into the, um, the group of <coughs> the ordinary braid group, uh, braid, braid group. And um, Colin and I and Jordan, we proved that for singular, uh, the singular monoid embeds in the singular group um, and there are other theorems. I don't know an example where this is not injected. Okay, so uh, as per usual, we can take a braid and make a diagram D hat and that, um, that braid becomes the diagram of a knot. Okay, a generalized knot. So a generalized braid goes to a generalized knot. Uh, all so far, all pretty unusual. Right, well now we've got a generalized Alexander um, defined, uh, pro proven by myself and Bartholomew. If the theory is regular, then every knot has a diagram which is the closure of a braid. Okay, and the proof is sufficiently simple that I can just sketch it. I think what we do is we take take every crossing. Let's say it's oriented this way, um, and it's got a tag A, and we replace that by a straight line like this and a straight line like. This this oriented with a bridge joining them like like the um, the, the brick diagram also labeled by a okay and what you get when you do that with a diagram you get a number of circles cyclic circles just do a few um, so here and they're joined by these bridges with certain labels, okay? And let's, let's have a, another one over here, maybe. Um, so it's gotta be oriented that way. Notice that if these, 
these are cyclic cir circles. Cyphert circles, um, if they're joined by a bridge like this, um, then they notice they're oriented coherently. They, they both orientation goes this way. You, I mean, for instance, I've, if I had a, um, a circle going, say, this way round, then I couldn't join it um, to here, but I could join it to here. Okay, because they're because they're they're coherently what's called coherently oriented. Now, <clears throat> if um if 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 an if a diagram is the closure of a braid, then we know it'll look like this. It'll be lots of uh, concentric circles with bridges joining them, right, like this, okay, and so on. So and and it will have um, what we call a, we will have a a polar region here of um, sorts of P one, P south, if you like, and then outside the P north. So we, something is of this form if and only if there are just two polar regions. And so how do we get from any uh, diagram to a situation where there are just two of these polar regions? And that we do by something called a Vogel move, which um, it, it, it consists of a, an R2 move. Um, well. Uh, you better look at our paper to see the details. I, I won't um, describe it now. But what it does is, um, so I've got a situation here. Uh, and if I go backwards to here, then you see if they're oriented the wrong way, like this. So this is, you know, if I'm trying to make them all oriented the same way, if I do that, I get... Um, I get a, uh, a circle here. Um, so this is not quite the right picture, but never mind. Yeah, uh, oh, anyway. So let me not do that now. Anyway, this, this move, this is called um, a Vogel move. It, go, it goes from here to here, so it increases the number of crossings, but it means it decreases, and you can work this out, the number of uh, cyphert circles which are not coherently oriented. And so it's a very simple idea. Um, and I don't think we were the first to think of it, but, uh, but it works for any regular theory, because obviously you need to have R2 in order for this to work. Now, what about um, the uh, Markov theory or the Markov theorem, the Markov moves? Well, remember that they are, when you take a, you take a braid and you um, beta, and then you go to, uh, or come back from, this situation where you have this braid here, and now you introduce another crossing up here, okay? Uh, and you could also, so that's that's what's called, that might be called stabilization. <clears throat> and you could also do it downstairs as well as upstairs. Um, so it might both be necessary. And then there's um, and then there's what I call um, conjugation. So we have beta here and then this is the same as if we do this, we have an alpha here, beta here, and an alpha inverse here. So the point is they both 
Classic Corrupt Conversation. So they both uh, close to the same knot. Okay, well, we know all that. And by the way, I've done this as a real crossing, but of course, we're talking general now, so could be anything. Um, and so we need R1 to get rid of that. And of course, we need R2 here in or even to define what alpha inverse is. And then there's a, there's a, a third move which I've written here. This is um, a situation where we've got uh, a braid R here and a braid Q here. Now we've got an A here and an A bar here underneath or, or on top, it can be. And uh, what we do is replace A and A bar by B and B bar. Okay, so this, um, this is a, a, a move either way, and it, it's called the exchange move. Now, those of you who've um, only considered real braids probably or might never have met this move because for, for real braids, it's a consequence of the other moves here these Markov moves. And we'll say some more about that, but or when this is necessary. Okay, so that's the exchange move. Um, so here we have another result, generalized Markov. If the theory is normal, then two braids which close to the same knot are related by a sequence of Markov moves and exchange moves. So that generalizes the, you know, the usual Markov theorem, um, which for the real case only has Markov moves, but in general we might need the exchange moves. And I think, um, I think I can write down here for, <clears throat> so for virtual braids, Exchange moves are necessary, and that's due to um, Sayuchi Kamada. And he has an example and an invariant which shows that this is uh, necessary. But oddly enough, um, for if I, for um, welded braids, the exchange moves are not necessary. And I'll indicate a proof of that. So, what is next? Okay, sometimes the exchange move is not needed, and here's, well, a, a sort of rough, um, uh, rough idea of how it's done. I, I start off with this situation here, alpha A and beta A bar. Okay, so that's indicated by N, for instance, is going the wrong way in this diagram. I didn't have time to change it. So it's alpha, alpha belongs to um, B, Bn of this knot theory. And we want to get all the way down to down here where we've got B and B bar. Okay. And I just quickly indicate how you do that. Um, so what have we done here? Um, we've we've introduced a pair B bar and B, which we can do, and then slotted in a C by um, by a mark by um, a stabilization move so we th so this is a combination of of conjugation and stabilization and and, and oh how lovely we've got this triangle so we can move over it and the C goes at the top 
and the B bar is here now, and the V is here. You probably can't see the B bar. Uh, so, so that that's um, and and then we continue it in this fashion. There's all sort of we uh, we uh, what have we done here? We've moved. Um, oh, and now we've got another triangle. Okay, we've moved C to the top, so we got V at the bottom, V bar at the bottom. Uh, no, sorry, V, not V bar. V bar is here. And we can move that up to the top and so on. And we go, uh, you know, there's a whole load of moves. We, and then we end up with V and E bar. So that's just, you know, a bit of um, detail. So for real braids, the exchange move X from R changing R, R bar. Uh, so is a consequence of the other M moves, and we get that by putting A equal to R, B equal to R bar, and C equals R bar. And for welded bra braids, uh, the exchange move, this is a consequence of the other oh, oh. moves. Um, I see, okay. <laughs> and we just put uh, A equal to that, and so on. So where are we now? Doodle. Okay, so what is a doodle? Well, we um, so here's a, an example. Here's a couple of examples of planar doodles. So here's the Borromean doodles. All right, so it's three components, um, and here's one with one component. Let's see if I can. Okay, so that's got um, one, two, well, it's got um, six cross. This one has got six crossings, this has got eight crossings, I think. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight. So, and this doodle is called the poppy. Uh, it's only got one component. When, uh, <coughs> when I um, originally defined doodles um, with, with my student, um, we only allowed, um, no, we didn't, didn't think of having self-crossings as Kovanov introduced self-crossings. So th those are planar uh, doodles. If we want uh, something which is non-planar, then take this. Um, okay, so we've got an ordinary crossing here and a virtual crossing here. And um, you will recognize this, of course, as the meridian and longitude of a torus. So this is non-planar, of course. But anyway, the point is with, with planar doodles, we don't have the, um, it, 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 it's, it's um, well, with, with both, neither of them, we don't have the R3 move, but the point is the planar doodles are uh, are not normal, whereas the um, the extended um, doodles on a surface R, um, they are normal. So we've got, um, so we have a situation here where maybe um, this doesn't satisfy the generalized Markov theorem. And in fact, it doesn't. Uh, so we need to give an example. First of all, we'll talk about twins. Now, what is a twin? Um, so a twin is, is the corresponding um, group corresponding to doodles. So we have, um, we just have uh, a singular, we ju <coughs> just have one single crossing. Um, let's call that T i, 
and we have the relations ti tj equals tj ti if i minus j is greater than one and ti squared equals one. So, um, but there's no there's no R three um, relation because they don't exist. Um, and of course, if we want to put in, um, we could also put in um, virtual crossings as well to make the group bigger. But I just keep to ordinary twins for now. Uh, corresponding to planar doodles, and so if I take if I take T1, T2, T1, T2, T1, T2, and I close this, this is the Borromean mm -hmm. doodle. Uh, and if I, in fact, if I do it again, T1, T2 to the fourth power, this is the poppy. Because we know <coughs> we know that every doodle is the closure of some um, some twin. Okay. Well, the the um, if I what about t one t two squared? So well, the closure of this uh, this is the closure of t one t two. Closure of this is the uh, unknot or the undoodle, well, trivial doodle. In fact, um, and that is an interesting fact. I mean, uh, you, you can work it out for yourself, I'm sure. Um, closure and minimal diagrams. Well, we know that everything, uh, so we know that <coughs> every, every planar doodle is the closure of a twin. And I think that was first proved by Kovanov. <coughs> But it's um. Uh, but of course, it, it's contained within uh, our theorem on uh, regular knot theories, and and planar doodles are regular. Um, but we also have um, every doodle has a unique minimal diagram and that's that's true for planar and um, and virtual uh, doodles and what do I mean by minimal I mean that um, it's got no monogons and it's got no digons because if it had one of those and one of those, I could simplify it by getting rid of, in this case, one crossing and in this case, two crossings. So um, if it's got one, of, if it's got either of these, I can get rid of them and I can keep going down. So I, I, if, if I've got two doodles, which are the same, um, then there is a downward sequence um, uh, T1 dash down, da, 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 down to a minimal, minimal doodle here, and the same thing down here. And th this is this minimal doodle is unique. Okay. Um, now, interestingly enough, although um, a minimal doodle need not be the closure of a twin, and here's an example. Um, 
This is minimal because you can check it has no monogons or bigons. And it has more than two polar regions, so it can't be the closure of a twin. Um, so here's some more homework for you, is to find which of these regions here is uh, are polar. I think there's four of them. So, um, so there's an example. Generalized. OK, so what is the generalized Markov theorem for doodles. Two twins which close to the same doodle are related by a sequence of Markov moves and a generalized stabilization. Now, what is this generalized stabilization? Well, supposing, um, how, how would this arise? So here, here's, um, here's some kind of doodle and um, in the middle, uh, so let's do another thing just for luck. If I if I did a um, put in a little R move R one move there, it's no longer the closure of a doodle. Now, in the general situation, I'd push this arc up and then get rid of it, and then it would be the closure. Okay, so um, but you can't do that because pushing that up would require um, R3 moves, okay? We can't, can't, because we'd have to push that um, crossing past these arcs. So we'll, we'll pretend we have done this. So let's, um, let's get rid of that crossing. Um, and okay, we're here now. So, and what we do is we introduce the following. So I'm going to um, so we'll go up, up, and away. And here are we'll come down like this. Okay, so. This is this is the move which you could do if you are allowed um, if you are allowed to uh, do the R three move. So this is a, a special kind of stabilization. You see, the normal stabilization you would you would be able to do it um, at the top, but you but with this generalized stabilization, you do it in the middle, which of course you can always do anyway. Uh, in the in the usual Bray theory, but this is this is something you can't do. Um, so you have to have that move on twins in order to um, get this um, get this uh, proof. And so the proof, as I said, is due to myself and Bartholomew. And I think there's another proof by Godin, but uh, it's. Uh, as far as I know, it's totally it's a different proof. So how do I know this is necessary? Well, we go back to our original um, example of um, T1, T2 squared. OK, so this would be um, so T1, T2, and then T1 again, and T2 again. Okay. And then, as I say, it's an easy, easy to show that the closure of this is trivial, but you cannot get from here um, to the trivial doodle in just one arc. Oops. T1, T2, T1, T2. Okay. Um, 
so that we need an invariant to show that this is not um, so this is not equivalent to uh, just the, the trivial uh, twin by old-fashioned Markov moves. You actually need that move. Um, so I've got time just to refine this um, this invariant, and so if I've got um, uh, so supposing I've got some twin tit and so on tik, and I pair off equal entries and joined by a mark okay, imagine these are rounded disks or something so imagine this um, so we've got them all around a circle and you join two if they're the same so let's say t1 here and t1 here and now um, you look at other pairings. So supposing I've got a T2 here and a T2 up here, and I join them by an arc, and I get a crossing here, and I take the sum mod 2 of all these crossings, okay, and I get a, a eta of, if that's the word W, eta of W, and that's equal plus a equals one or naught this is the same as mod two now for this one um, we've got t1 and t2 so we've got t1 t2 t1 t2 so we've got a an arc from t1 to t1 and arc from t2 to so this is the invariant here eta equals one and it's uh, easy uh, to, to prove that this is well defined and it is unchanged by traditional Markov move. So, um, but of course the trivial Doodle has, has eta zero. So that proves that they can't go from one to the other. Okay. Right, well, um, so we need the generalized stabilization. Um, some algebra associated with doodles. Well, it's come to the witching hour of six o'clock. So I'm going to stop there. Um, are there any questions? Nope. Everything was completely understandable, and you don't. Roger, know. Yeah? could you remind us what you mean by polar? Uh, I came in quite late. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, sure. I'll um, I'll go back to sharing a screen. So. Um, so if I do. Um, So a polar region is uh, is a region of. I mean, it, it, it's it's defined by a Seifert circle, in which all the um, the bridges go out. Ah, okay, I see. And so, um, or all go in you know, whatever. So that, that's a polar region. And, and if it's the closure of a braid, it'll only have, it'll have two polar regions and no more. Uh, it's an if and only if. Does that answer your question? Yes, yes, thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions? I'm going to um, okay, so I'm going to continue this uh, next week. Um, probably only take about half an hour, probably, to...
to look at the various um, different uh, algebras associated, you know, the, the, with the with um, twins and doodles, uh, which is all quite interesting. Um, well, it is to me, it may not be to you. <laughs> Roger, could I ask a question? Sure, Sam. Um, have you thought of extending these methods to uh, work with uh, um, uh, basically uh, uh, four-dimensional knots? Look at the uh, midsection views, the diagrams there, and add the Osakawa moves. Seems I like haven't, a technique. I haven't thought about that at all, but um, you're you're welcome to take it and run with it. <laughs> okay, I'll give it a try. Uh, it seems like uh, your methods ought to. Uh, ought to work and ought to lead to some new results there. Yeah. Look very well, interesting. Well, yeah, I'd be interested to talk at any time if you want to discuss it. Yeah, yeah certainly the Yoshikawa moves uh, and diagrams look like a generalized knot theory. Ah, okay. Oh, well, that would, that would be an interesting topic of discussion. Any other questions? Okay, so um, I'll see you all. Okay. Bye now. What is that? Two ten. Send the mic. Somebody sent me a chat. Oh, the options are under the audio settings. Okay. Okay, bye for now. Bye.